Guido coming at you with some DCS, my friends. So this took a, a couple weeks to get done. Last week, Slick and I flew a mission. The The objective here is to fly a simulated real world, simulated, simulated real world mission. So kind of like we would do a training mission. Of course, there's some DCS-isms in there. There's some sim-isms. We're going to have some shenanigans at the end, goofing off. But the idea is from taxi to takeoff to kind of show you what it takes to go out there, fly some BFM basic fighter maneuvers. We're going to do two 6Ks and the high aspect BFM, which is about as much gas as you've got. Now, I spent about an hour. What I wanted to do was do a voiceover as the recording went. And it's not the impossible dream, but for me at the moment, it's the very arse pain dream because I initially recorded the comms. And unfortunately, it's on Discord and not SRS. So it doesn't sound like a radio. It's just he and I talking in a voice room in Discord. I initially recorded the VR version and supposedly DCS's last patch fixed a lot of the ratchety problem, but I'm I'm getting it. And it's kind of it kind of sucks because it's a little bit herky jerky and stuff. So then what I like to do is I get into the really crappy DCS replay system, which is sort of being in the game itself, so it, it there's no backup. You can't reverse. There's no sound because it doesn't record that as far as on your on your uh, mics and stuff. I mean, why would it? So now I got two recordings and I'm trying to sync them up, which I have done for the video. So that's good. At least the voice from the VR version, then what you do there is you just tell it not to show the video part. So I got that taken care of. <laughs> I think in the future, what we'll do is we'll just record the voice and then I can use whatever, whatever I want. So I was going to have to sync up two videos, one with a voice only, and then try to record again with, with OBS and put the voiceover. And now we've got a recording of a recording and it was just becoming a big pain in the rear and I was starting to lose a lot of the uh, fidelity on it. So long story short, all we're going to do here is I'm going to discuss some of the stuff up front. We'll show you the video and hopefully I cover most of the, the silliness and goof ups. If you have any questions, chuck them down below right there. So Slick and I are both uh, former Eagle drivers, FTU IPs, operational IPs, blah, blah, blah. Long time though. All right. So standard caveats here. It's DCS. It's been 15 years for both of us, maybe a little more, a little less, something like that. So there's probably a lot of procedures and things that have changed. We're saying things wrong, but, and we're also digging back a lot of years to some of the stuff. So we'll go over a couple of the details here though. We're going to, we were going to take off and we'll do a well, abbreviated ground ops. Normally you'd go through all the briefing and the stepping and starting up the jet and all that. We're just going to start and start a jet so right there in EOR, actually at the runway. We're already through EOR and a runway right there. And we will pull onto the runway and take off. It's going to be a two ship lineup. We'll do a run up formation takeoff is what we try to do. There's some shenanigans there. You'll see that. We'll go out on the departure, which is essentially a straight shot. We're flying out of Groom Lake on the Nevada map. On the knitter map, we're going to go straight off 1-4 and we're just going to drive out over land, do some BFM off to the southeast and then come back and land on 1-4 as a two ship up initial was the plan. Get a systems check on the way out. The BFM, we're immortal by the way, which you're going to find out quickly on Slick's takeoff right there. That way if we shoot each other, we don't blow up and have to restart. And what's cool so if you use TAC view, it will record the hit, so you'll know when you get hit. So you can use that for debrief and all that kind of thing. So we're going to do a couple 6K offensives for each. We turn, then we'll do a high aspect BFM. That's about as much gas as you would get. Three to four setups is pretty standard with a slick jet, with a clean jet, which is what we have. We're not carrying a tank. 10,000 foot floor. Normally in DCS, you, the floor is the floor. That That's what it is realistically or in the real world. But we're going to do more of a training idea here. So we're going to use a 10,000 foot floor, which I think is actually even a little low for out there because the ground is quite high. I'm not sure that gives you a full 5,000 right there from all the terrain. But that's what we're going to use just as a number to chuck out there. Uh, ideally, we're not over but I did. I know I did. You're going to hear it. I, I assume Slick may, might have. I didn't ask him that question, actually. And then we'll RTB get back together. We're going to do a battle damage check, which is to check each other's jet, see if there's anything goofy, panels open, things that are bent, leaks, anything that might be bad. Uh, good news is it's a simulation, and there isn't going to be anything bad because we don't have the emergency procedures thing turned on, and 
good deal. Good deal. So a couple other things. Let's see. Like I said, a basic training mission. Uh, I did over G actually in the GX and a couple of the setups, but we're not trying to do that. DCS B BFM a lot. If you watch some of the videos, uh, if they've got the actual audio from in the jet, you know, guys doing 550, 600 knots and honking on the, on the stick. If you honk hard enough on it, you might pull the wings off. Otherwise it's over G over G over G and people are just completely flying outside the actual parameters of the jet. Again, it's a, it's a video game with modeled parameters, all that good stuff. But, you know, it seems to be pretty darn close. We are going to try to fly within the limits of the uh, operational limits of the jet. So if I did over G in real life, then we'd have to knock it off and go home. And I'm going to end up doing it like three times today, although I'm not exactly trying to. It's really easy to, to snatch the stick in VR because you, you don't get the, the G feeling coming on right there. However, it's also easy once you get comfortable with it, to be able to understand the amount of travel on the stick to not over G and listening to the tone. So that is an experience thing and a proficiency thing. Uh, we're not using radios, as I mentioned earlier. So we're going to work on that. We'll get SRS up and going. It'll sound, you know, it'll just sound a lot better with the, you know, all that good stuff. I did mention it's 6,000 foot offensive, then a high aspect. All right. Who should win? There's a, there's a long discussion on, on the training isms of this uh, similar BFM the setups, why we set the things up like we do. You will hear us talking about ranges and aspect angles. What we're trying to do is set up every one of them at a four aspect and then a 3,000, 6,000 or 9,000 foot setup. Other jets do different distances. There's nothing necessarily magic about each one of those, but they do have some specific building block DLOs involved with them, i.e. 3K is more to a gun's defense. 6K is a break into the bandit some kind of vertical development usually depending on what's going on although that's not necessarily automatic it has a lot to do with what the band is doing and a 9k is more of a rate fight kind of thing obviously when you've got somebody at a four aspect behind you and they're offensive the air quotes should win what you're trying to do is minimize the amount of time or maximize the amount of time you live minimize if you're the offender and maybe even neutralize them if you can do so and try to defeat what other what whatever wedges they come at you with whether it's the aim nine mic x or the gun so there's various ways to do all those different things it's set up like that and we have those very specific parameters so that when we debrief we have a a known starting point and we have a good idea of how things kind of go from there so when we debrief to mistakes there's not as many random factors thrown in as just a random aspect angle or merge. Now, obviously in the real world, or even when you're doing ACT or something, merges come in all different flavors and types, but BFM is broken down to very specific learning objectives, especially at the lower levels. If you're talking about training a brand new guy or a younger wingman, now, you can expand then all the different parameters from there. And that's actually very interesting, very fun when you get into BFM that has different parameters. High aspect is kind of like that. It's a neutral merge coming right at each other and, you know, may the best man win depending on how they maneuver their jet, what their airspeed is, and et cetera, et cetera. That'll be the third setup. So in theory, all that is to say the offender air quotes should win. Okay. Uh, training rules wise, we're going to use a 500 foot bubble, which means we're not supposed to get within, within 500 feet, although I think we might break that. Obviously, you want to fly within the parameters of the jet as discussed with the G's. 10,000 foot floor and we will fly to a logical conclusion which is to say once we get down to the floor and somebody has already been shot a few times then we're going to knock it off and reset which is what we would do in the real world there's no reason to to get down and grovel at the 10,000 foot floor with all your gas you know if you're both neutral and you're both just groveling on the floor which is fun in DCS but if you played the game especially if your fuel isn't um, immortal or whatever I'm trying to say unlimited uh, it can go for a while, right? You get in a two circle that both guys are flying well when well, you've used all your fuel up. Well, we don't want to do that in training. We want to maximize the amount of setup. So we want to have the, the starting parameters, as I discussed, as close as possible. We're going to fight to a logical conclusion, like if someone calls a kill, if things are neutralized, or if we're just groveling or whatever, then we'll just knock that thing off. Obviously, a TR violation like a bubble bust or a floor bust or something would also knock it off and we'll reset it up. You'll see that we have enough gas for about three setups, which is pretty standard, three to four, depending on how long they go. High aspect tends to be a little bit more gas because it takes a little longer usually for the logical conclusion to show up. 
Uh, one interesting thing I got out of the debrief for myself when I was watching it is how little I looked at the engine instruments. That is not how that should go. It's all cross-check stuff, but I'm in the virtual world with the perfect jet. I'm not worried about my oil having a problem or my engines overheating or doing something silly. Uh, in the jet, you would check those a lot more. I'm going to try to actually bring that back into the cross-check there. It, there, is a, there is a significant um, interest, I guess, when you're actually flying your pink body in one of these jets to manage the jet and pay attention to everything, right? Because you'd, you'd like to get home and land. That'd be good. <laughs> when you're in VR and it's been 15 years and they're, you're in the safety of your nice office chair, you don't worry about the engine so much, but... I should be looking at it a lot more. I did like that we did get a few fuel checks in there, which I think is very interesting. You're going to hear us say that a couple times. And that's one of those things you want to pay attention to because if you get a fuel leak or something silly is going on with one of your tanks, you may not have as much fuel as you think. And that's also a bad thing. So I, I just picked that up. Um, there's some shenanigans at the end. I'll just show you that. We fly around and we're immortal, so we're going to hit the ground and run into each other and do dumb things like that that... Uh, very clearly, I it shouldn't have to be mentioned, but clearly you would not do any of that in the real world. I'm also using the F10 key for station keeping to find out where the airfield is and some other things. Uh, one time, I think I actually screw up my clock positions, which is really funny because this is a fairly common thing. And it's one of the reasons why if someone says, what's your posit? We'll say left or right. Left or right according to them. Okay, so if two says blind then i would tell him left or right left say nine o'clock or right three o'clock but i actually say left four o'clock which is wrong but that's why we usually put left or right on there so if we screw up the clock position at least they know it's somewhere on the left side and they go okay dummy left four o'clock got it that's really eight o'clock kind of idea so there's a lot of little mistakes you might pick up in this thing all due to proficiency and recency currency all that good stuff all right, so let's roll into the video. Enjoy. This is, like I said, a BFM sortie out of Groom Lake. We're going to do a formation, I'm going to say ish, takeoff. <laughs> formation, takeoff, departure. We will do a systems check, which is where we get behind each other, and we're going to check our radar modes. I actually shoot the gun, which you clearly would not do in the real world. <laughs> There's, there shouldn't be any bullets in it. If they are, it should be safed up. If anything is armed actually on the jet, then you wouldn't pull any triggers or do some of these things. But... Because it's DCS, we can goof around a little bit. System check, go out there. We're going to do a GX. We're going to do some setups, like 6K offensive for two, 6K offensive for one, a high aspect. Rejoin, come back, battle damage check on the way back in. We're going to come up initial, pitch out and land, and then shenanigans will ensue. So I hope you enjoy this. Let me know if you got any questions down below. This is a a uh, process as we get better and better at this we're going to get stump in here a little bit more we'll try to do this with an acm mission as well and some other things so lots of fun enjoying it especially the learning on figuring out how to make this thing work this dcs thing i'll keep working on the recording side and how we want to do this i really want to get to where i can actually pause like i do on the tanks videos and talk about things to you guys and kind of point out what's going on the other problem not necessarily a problem but uh restriction i suppose is what you're seeing is me in the cockpit in my head position as opposed to some of the cooler pictures of you know outside of the jet seeing some of the maneuvering maneuvering and things but i think to some extent that's actually very realistic and interesting because when you're flying the jet obviously that's where you are and all the inputs you take are where you are looking and i think sometimes that is very uh, illustrative Ill illustrative of kind of how the flying goes what it what it really is like as opposed to these really cool outside pictures and external pictures and the formations and all that you don't really get to see that necessarily you know you know who sees the whole formation in a four ship well the last guy right number four if they're an echelon he sees everyone number one he can sometimes look back and see him but he's also navigating flying the jet and doing all that stuff all right enough of that crap here it is check it out bfm sortie out of groom lake a real world training ish thing all right, I'll do my best. We're recording now, just for giggles. Okay. I All appear right. to have most of my systems going. Are we going to do guns only for BFM, or are we going to do heaters? Uh, guns only. I don't think you're going to have it. I don't think you have a heater. I don't think I put any heaters on these. And we should be... We should be immortal. Oh, Okay.
trying to hit my brakes here. That's, uh... One's ready. He's ready. Run him up. One's ready. He's ready. Release. I'm all over the fucking place back here, dude. <laughs> Rotate. Climbing away, gear flaps. Oh, if I actually did my gear up, did I do my gear up? I didn't do my gear up. Oh, yeah. What the fuck do I put my gear up? GNF will work. Here's the one. It's this one over here. There we go. Alright. And I did not accidentally shut down my engine. Alright. Sorry, I couldn't figure out how to put my gear up. Okay, I'm up now. <laughs> Let me, uh... Systems check. You leave right. Leave right. I keep wanting to grab the canopy. Every time I turn around, I want to grab on the canopy. One has lead left. Lead left. Tactical. One's 12 4 squared bounced. No, 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 no. Two's 12 1 squared. Push it up, standby GX. Two. One's ready. Two's ready. First GX. In place, 180 left, go. Reference 300. One terminate. Terminate. Reference 300, push it up. One ready. Stand by, two's ready. Second GX in place, one of you left. Go. Reference 
Reference one two zero and one terminate. Two terminate. One's a eleven six squared balanced tank one feeding. Who's eleven five squared balanced? Tank one. Do I have a tank one? I don't have a tank one. You have. <laughs> oh a tank yeah, I do. I have a tank one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking seven five. I got a tank one. Climb, Everybody has a tank one. Climb a one eight zero. First setup will be six thousand foot offensive for number two. So that'll be interesting. Go ahead and widen it out just a bit. We'll just play it wider because I think you're probably okay. right about at six based on what it looks like to me. I don't really have an air to attack in. I yeah, there isn't one. That's the problem. You're like one pixel big out uh, there on the horizon. Yeah. Are we what doing 18,000? Yep, 18,000. One's ready. Stand by. Two's ready. Check 45 left. Since we don't really know the range, just let me know once you get a radar lock how far we are, how far I am. Okay. I'm just gonna go straight for a little bit here. Clock ten. Shit, where the hell is the fucking distance here? Twelve thousand, I guess. Okay. Yeah, you can go back uh, to guns. Five right. Yep. Twelve thousand six right. Ooh, he's off. Okay. Fucking get on speed, slick. Uh, 8,000? Nope, 9,000, sorry. 8,000. Five right. Uh, four right. 6,000. Lights on. Left side. Did I hit you with anything? Can't even tell. I know. Yeah, it'll probably, ever came up. it'll probably show up. Attack to the left side, reference 330. Okay. Yeah, it was usually like when you hit, little, you'll get a little thing up on your uh, windscreen, you know? I may have heard some things. I don't know. There was a lot of bullets going by. One's 10 point off, square balance, tank 1 feet. Do 10 1 uh, square balance, tank 1 feet. Check left 310. Except we 6,000 foot offensive for number one. Left two nine zero. One's ready. And two's ready. Check forty five left. Five right, two point four, six right, two miles, eleven thousand, five right, nine thousand, five right, seven thousand, four right, six thousand, fight zone.
check floor. Yep, I'm at uh, 10 floor. Back there. <laughs> One knock it off. Two knock it off. Come off right. Reference zero seven zero. Tactical right side. Left. Two o'clock low. Still Flaring. Visual. Reference 110, tactical right side. 17.1, yep. one, squared balance, tank one feeding. 27.8, squared balance, tank one feeding. Next setup, high aspect BFM, 15,000 foot start. Ready? She's ready. Check 45 away. Turn in fights on. Can't tell how far apart we are. Bingo 5030 acknowledge. Shit, we're doing 10,000 foot floor. I busted the floor, dude. Yeah. Sorry. Knock it off one, knock She's it off. Two, knock it off. <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention. Come back right. Tack to the left side. Visual be your right. Five to five o'clock level. Two's visual. Yeah, I went down to 9,500 there. Your reference setting? One's Joker minus five. Two's 5.8. Fence out, CMD's off. Who's off? Could rejoin left side. One's slow on 300. See you on this desert backer. Sorry, what did you say the reference setting was? Uh, currently holding two, two eight zero, three hundred knots.
<laughs> Maybe I lost my men out here. Yeah. Good. Good. Take lead right. Who's got lead on the right? One. Where are we going? I'm going to where we're going. Yeah, just to the right side of that mountain there. Groom Lake's right on the other side of that little mountain. You can see some of the buildings. Are we pointing at it? No, it's off to our right. Oh, off our not, right. I'm over to the right. Okay. Yeah. Tally home. Got lead right. One lead right. Root. One's code one. Who's code one? Final fuel five point one. Who sent? This feels like 4,500, so we're going to do a uh, 6,000-ish. Okay. Initial one four. You're getting the dreaded cross under on initial. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll just accept this, whatever. We'll do a right break. It'll work. We're a bit high, though. Cross under down. Sure. No, that's fine. We'll just do a right break for. Okay. Shits and giggles.
Eagle flight of two, initial one four, full stop. Two right base, you're down full stop. Your flaps. Oh, that's your speed slick, motherfucker. See ya. <laughs> I don't know if my brake button is actually working here. It doesn't seem to be. Nice. Why is it not? Yeah, not, my brakes don't seem to be working. What's the other alternate key here? Me? Nice. That's one way to deal with it. <laughs> Gunshot though, didn't I? Bingo fuel. Bingo fuel. Nice. Skadoosh. Did you bounce or did you blow up? Oh, I bounced. Yeah. if I land upside down. <laughs> Dude, oh, Dude, man. I am upside down. Immortality is awful. I like it. Dude, I am upside down on the runway.
Come. Oh, Why are you hovering? Back. I don't have my gear down. I'm gonna put my gear down. Watch what happens when you, when you do this. Because then you do land shark, and then you gotta like get enough. You gotta get enough like altitude so your gear will come down. Just let it go forward like this. Where are you? I'm about to run out of gas here, so. Can't get enough speed to actually pop. Are you over in the? Where are you over by the? In the dirt or what? Dirt. Yeah, I went over here in the dirt. I finally got going straight. I'm trying to get some air speed. I got about 800 pounds of gas here. Can't see you. I should be leaving a big old trail behind me. I think I'm leaving a big smoke trail behind me. Really? How far off in the desert are you? Heading uh, heading south. Fuel 500. I do not see said dust storm. Are you already outside of the uh, airfield? Alright, here's what's happening now. <laughs> now can you see me? No. I should be under should be under a canopy. On my canopy. I'm yeah, falling. I just I just punched out. Oh. I can't see you for some I don't know where you are. Are you still on the airfield somewhere? Yeah, I, I guess I'm kind of off to the. I'm off to the non airbase side of the runway. Really? I can see the runway about 200 yards away. Where are you? I'm just. I'm way up above. I'm flying around. Yep, you're. I'm right below you right now. You oh, there see you me are. Out here oh. on the left side there. Okay. You should see my parachute. Are we about to violate Geneva Conventions? <laughs> <laughs> no. Nice. Oh. Oh, dude, that's hilarious. You went underground and then you came back out. Or was that my jet? Yeah, that was your jet. You completely destroyed my jet. Land shark. 